into the Spicy Book Nook, where we discuss all of our favorite and not so favorite dark and dirty book series. We're your hosts, Aj and Tay. So without further ado, let's get into it. Today, we will be reviewing Hooked by Emily McIntyre. Please be aware that there will be spoilers and explicit content for mature audiences only. For this book, there are some trigger warnings. Um, The trigger warnings for this book are graphic sexual scenes, breath play choking, torture, physical assault, kidnapping, and mentions of sexual abuse of a minor. Please be aware for mature audiences only. Okay, so hi, we um, have a guest today, um, my good friend Stassi, and um, I'll let you go ahead and say hi. Hi, everyone. (laughs) Yay, we have a special guest. I'm so excited. I know, yeah. this is our first one. <laughs> oh, I'm the first. Ooh, You're the oh, first. Nice, honey. Talk to me. Nice. Look, yes, you are the first. And we have a good book. Um, so um, what are your guys' thoughts on Hooked? Or do you want to go into the story of Hooked? I I actually like this one a lot for multiple reasons. Like... It was, for me, it did all the things from childhood to grown-up me. It just touched all the places. Okay. <laughs> so have you seen Peter Peter Pan before? Oh, yeah, absolutely. That's oh. what I'm saying. Childhood to all the way to grown-up <laughs> me. See, we haven't. We never seen it, so. Yeah. Disculpe? You, not, you guys have never seen <laughs> No. You guys have never seen Peter Pan? Nope. No, we and, haven't. Oh, and why also... So- reading the never king series i'll never watch it yeah i can't do that to myself um it's just now i already have in my mind who i think these characters are so i can't like so i with, can't watch the so peter pan crazy, and, what's and crazy that. is the people that in the movie like I, okay so like this if you think about the book flip every person in the character in every characters in the book and that's who they are in the movie like I don't know how to explain it like it was just so good to like see each character be flipped you know what I'm saying like you're like oh heroes but it definitely is the epitome of don't meet your heroes that's, I mean, what these, yeah. that's what these books are. Like, don't that, lose your heroes. That I get because I know, like, in this book, like, the gist of Peter Pan, Peter Pan's normally, like, the good guy. And mm-hmm. Hook of is, course. Like, he's normally, like, you know, the villain. But in this book, he definitely, it was like, Peter was definitely, like, just. Peter was on bullshit. Awful. You could oh, say it. Sure. Peter was on he all was that bullshit. Awful. <laughs> but see, that's why I've always loved villains, though, because they have, like, they always have like a bad rap, but they're the people that are confident in their dark places. Like, you know what you're getting with these people. Like, oh, yeah. I don't, I, I, Definitely. listen, they'll set the world on fire, but they'll do it for me. So that's yeah. fine. That's, that's okay. But like, when you think about heroes and they're like, oh, unscathed and all of those things, like, in my head, I always think about certain heroes as politicians, right? When they have such a beautiful public figure, there's always that one person. If you go even, even just inquire about their life outside of politics, there was always some kind of dirt. And I think these oh, books are really good because they immediately drudge that shit up. Like, oh yeah, this is this is what it is. We're great. We own all of this wonderful stuff. Yeah, you had to step on somebody's neck to get all of it. So yep. and mm-hmm. yeah. James definitely uh was all about destroying his enemy in the beginning of the story it pretty much started off like straight up that he was killing somebody and (laughs) it turned out to be croc uh which Mm -hmm. was uh his uncle Mm -hmm. and so that was just off rip you know crazy because i mean that's how i think this is one of the first dark romance books that i've read so when I read it, I was like, oh, we get into it. Yeah, immediately. Mm-hmm. But here's the other thing. So as somebody that's already watched Peter Pan, okay, let me tell you about who Croc is in Peter Pan. He literally torments Hook the entire time. Like he, Peter Pan literally like 
six croc on him almost all the time. And at some point, it's been a while since I watched it, but I think the crocodile swallows a watch. And, and that's, that's why, why he, he don't ticks. like that ticking sound. Mm-hmm. That's why he ticks. And so Hook knows that the crocodile is coming because it's like, you know, and he's like, oh, shoot, hell no. Because he he's going to gobble me up, my boy. Um, oh, so that's, that's what I'm saying. It, that, that's what I'm saying is like, it's so cool because the nostalgia behind it. But then you get to see James the Hook get his power back right he's like okay this this crocodile has tormented me my whole life every time I set sail like and so the book beginning with hook taking out the crocodile like that you you better okay you better he's dealing with his demons essentially so that's why I was like I love this already I'm here (laughs) she's like I like this (laughs) I feel it it was, I mean, even, like, I have, like, a basic, basic knowledge of Peter Pan. Yeah. The, enough to where, like, when I was reading this, I was like, oh, like, they jumbled all the characters up. Like, Yeah, they, they really of, do. Yeah, like, I'm like, these are, these are jumbled. Like, Hook is, I mean, he's supposed to be the villain, but essentially, he's the good guy. No, uh, let's not even he, go there, because he was definitely a villain in this book. Okay, I mean, but, like, he, I'm saying, he had my girl kidnapped, okay? But... Morally, morally, he was trying to be moral, good. Okay. He, okay, he has a moral compass, and he and he's only wronging people because they wronged him first. So yeah. that's true. He's not, you know, technically he's not just like this villain. It's just like, okay, you did this to me, so now I'm gonna kill you. I mean, or, but yeah, he's, he he's collecting debts. He was kind of, he was kind of, kind of wilding because. There's no reason why he had to go after, you know, Wendy. Like, I know that he wanted to hurt Peter, but, like, why it had to be his daughter? Like, because it just hurt him. I know you lost somebody, but that's wrong. But he said that Wendy was what was most important to Peter. Obviously, during the book, we find out, like, Peter is a selfish asshole. But yeah. at one point in time, Wendy was the most important thing to him. So, mm-hmm. in his that's mind, true. it just made sense. That I'm gonna just go for her, and then he ended up falling in love with her, and I love that because I'm such a love. fan of a like, <laughs> like I'm not supposed to love this person, but then I just accidentally fall in love with this person. Yeah, I love that. I'm so corny. Like, no, I love it, that. but that's the thing is it wasn't it wasn't even accidental. It was involuntary, and for me, oh, that does it because baby, I want to know what I do to you. Okay, so I oh, I loved. <laughs> I think my favorite part of this whole thing was the dynamic that they shared between Sub and Dom. It wasn't just about ownership. It was also about me belonging to you as much as you belong to me. And having that equal power exchange um, and how it was just ripping him apart because he had spent his whole life regaining control. And so he was like, oh man, this girl, she, she got some strings to pull on me and I... I don't like that, so I have to keep it. The only thing that has control over me, I have to keep it. Like, this has to be mine because there's no way that you have this power over me. So I either embrace it or I fight it my whole life. So I I really, really love that. And I think it made the spicy scenes even better because they had built that rapport. Yeah, they were great. It was just so good because, like, one, his vibe is so just, like, like I was telling Tavia, like his whole entire vibe is like, I'm confident in myself and like, I know it. So it's like, even when mm-hmm. he's doing all these things to Wendy, like he's completely aware of how he's able to make her feel. And that just makes like the scenes that much better. And he's also super attentive to her needs. And he's not just mm-hmm. like wanting to take, like, he's like, I want to make you feel good. And I want to make you feel things you've never felt before. And he's so aware of his power to do that. And I was mm-hmm. just like, that made those scenes just like 10 out of 10. 10 out yeah. of 10. I want to know why every man in these books want to do anal. I'm, I mean, I'm not <laughs> oh, saying I'm not opposed to it. I'm just saying that in every one of these books, they like, let me put this finger in your booty, but no. you know what's next, girl. You know what's next. Well, I think I think it's one of those things that like they always like to flirt with the forbidden. So the women like to flirt with the forbidden men, and the men like to flirt with the forbidden. So like it, it, it's just an overall like 
we got to get to the nitty gritty fantasy. So you already know that the writers are going to be like, yep, we got to talk about butt stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Straight to the butt stuff. But I think for me, I don't know why, but every single time they said pussy, it just, uh, (laughs) uh, it was so (laughs) crazy, bro. I just couldn't. You listened to it too, huh? Yes. It just sounded like there was molasses in his mouth every time he said it. It just sounded so (laughs) like, yeah, it was like sticky, but like not the good kind of sticky. Like I want to wash my hands, you know, like that kind of thing. But I did, (laughs) when they did talk about like the anal stuff, I was like, huh? I mean, well, okay. (laughs) That probably hurt a lot. Y'all did that wrong, but Yes, we're in here. Butt stuff. Let's go. Okay, we're in. <laughs> Not it hurt. But it was her first time for everything. So I don't know if I like yes. that as much, but. Yeah, she was definitely a virgin in this book, too. Mm-hmm. Yes. Most of them are, because like I said, they, it's always so tantalizing to have the forbidden. Like, oh, she's never been touched. She's never done this. I'm her first for this. And so, like, it's. <sighs> I think it's one of those things that it caters to both people like for the women that have thought about it but you know haven't necessarily gone to that place yet or you know if if men are are reading this book if men haven't happened to pick it up or their spouses want to have that kind of conversation it can actually open dialogue for couples to have it in a book like if your your wife is interested in it or your girlfriend's interested in it and she's reading this book she's like oh my gosh I mean because you know how we do we be saying random stuff to our guys oh my gosh I'm reading this book and they talked about butt stuff (laughs) I'm that girl okay so I mean for me you can definitely it, it just opens dialogue you can think about it and you're like hmm babe have you ever thought about anal even if you don't mention the book right like oh what do you think about this like yeah the book definitely be turning people out I'm, I'm not saying me but I'm saying it do <laughs> so I was actually surprised because the way you keep telling me about books I'm almost afraid to read it because you tell me all of the stuff that could be in it but I think if like when you listen to our episodes we normally talk about what happens in the book and like our thoughts on it and I mean a lot of these books like this book I would say that there wasn't a lot of um I wouldn't say there was super degradation or anything where no not at all like this is is like a good starter like dark romance type read like it was good there was like five triggers. Like most of the books we read, we're reading like a paragraph <laughs> of fucking trigger warnings where they're like, everything you could possibly think of is going to be in this book. But this one was like really just like, there was literally like five triggers and they weren't even bad. It was like choking. Like normally it's like rape, this, this, like mm-hmm. gunplay, nice play. Like this one was very just, it was like a good if you're just gonna start reading like darker romance then mm-hmm. it's like mm-hmm. it's like a really good starter book this is definitely a good recommendation but the story was still there like story I love was still the story there. Line. it was still a great yes. great book did it's... you guys have any favorite characters in the book other than james because i know that's my favorite no but yeah. he, that was my favorite no <laughs> i'm like nah, no just okay james. so i'm um, okay i'm gonna be that person <laughs> Sorry, everybody. Uh, Moira was actually my fave. What? I mean, Moira. Moira. I mean, that's that's a good favorite though, because she really like fucking flipped the script. So oh, yeah. yeah, she yeah. literally stuck it to every single person in the book. Wendy caught it. James caught it. Peter couldn't even keep up. Like, yeah, like, you know, like you know, it just one. for me, it was my favorite because she was because of the impact that she had and the loyalty that she gained so quickly that everything was really just spun on its head. And for me, I love, I love somebody that can play the back. It's like, and like never she, seen she anything key. coming with her. Yeah, like, exactly. Come, so she, was everybody was like, for real, everybody kept it. trying to play her. Yeah. Everybody kept trying to play her like, Oh, she's, she's just a hoe. She's just a bartender. She's just this. But it was like, man, 
I don't she was about just it. a hoe. I'm not even gonna lie. She was. No, she a was. Hoe. She was but... absolutely a hoe to James, <laughs> but she was like, she I... was a hoe ass person too. But oh, for sure, she was foul. But she she she, 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 was, she was very intelligent. She was a major that was player. Very strategic of her. On how yeah, she, she was a major player. Pretty much everybody. You know what, Peter? I one thing that I really liked was like when Peter was exposed for how like he really didn't give a damn about his daughter mm-hmm. yeah that, like, that, that just hurt my heart it for her. hurt my heart like, like oh i, was I like, felt such a piece of shit. Pain. such a piece of shit listen i felt everybody when he was like oh what did, what did he say don't you see the resemblance listen i was so, i didn't even have to read really? past that i didn't even have to read past that i was like no fucking way literally my mouth dropped like like you said didn't even have to read past that knew exactly what the fuck he meant right <laughs> i was like oh, I was like, oh hell no nah. I, I was like you have it because it all just came together it was like this is why he hates the brother so oh, much this is why man. he doesn't care to be around him this is why he doesn't love him like it's like with that one sentence like everything was put together and i was right. like and then oh you have to God. like you now you have to think about all the things that it played and even james said it he said i got a half brother and a cousin all in one day ain't that something yeah. look yeah. at god won't <laughs> what, what <Yeah>. not, <laughs> you know emily did her job when it came to writing this i think that's one thing i liked about her um never after series mm-hmm. because every single one of the books has a good twist oh, good. and has it just has a really good storyline that has you like girl my jaw is dropped because yeah, definitely I, my jaw was dropped even reading it again because I read it once before and then I went and listened to it and this time I was still I must have forgot because I was like oh my god yeah so I did that too so I literally just finished it before I went back into um what did I say y'all was about to read? The Carter Diamond situation? So I literally just finished it. Like not even a couple weeks ago. But I was like, okay, let me refresh. I went into it and I was like, oh my God. Did I not hear this the first time? Like, like, did I miss that? What? I just reread it and finished it probably like four hours ago. And <laughs> I'm glad I'm, you could make it. It was it. just it was literally like reading it for the first time all mm-hmm. over again and I was like oh my god I can't like and I this is like one of my absolute favorite books but like some of the details I'm like oh my god I can't believe I forgot like that that happened yep. yep I was just I was like wow this is like reading it almost for the first time all over again one did thing- you guys have any favorite spicy scenes I would say probably just the first scene for me would be like because it was just like she one I'm like Wendy you can't just be going off with strange men you don't know babe like facts <laughs> like, <laughs> Listen. like but the fact on the boat like you know he could just make her like come undone and she's just like very much like oh my god this is so new I've never done this before mm-hmm. like that was like and again he's just very just like let me just you know let me whisper just dirty little things in your ear and that just like did it for her like because she's never done anything that she's like yep that's enough for me (laughs) and like the British accent on the audible did help I mean I I was feeling the British accent I wasn't sure how it was been like that because normally I absolutely hate audible and I hate (laughs) they ruin the books for me every time no every time this was the one book where I'm like wow they actually like it did not ruin it for me like it, it really didn't. The British actually actually worked in my favor this time. See, I I did not like this. And I listen, I love me some Audible, honey. But listen, I'm telling you, every time he's, I thought, I felt like I was watching um, a poorly made porno sometimes. Oh, no. Just because, just the way it was like, like I said, the way he said, puss and cunt and cock and uh, like I'm yeah I talked fan. about that on TikTok I'm like uh, those words give me the ick anyway yeah kind yeah of cock um, or just like uh. yeah Mm-mm. it was making me itchy but I will say I'm a huge fan of the innuendos I've always loved that like or even if you like this is gonna sound weird but like break down body parts like 
my swollen clit, my wetness, shaft, my length, like those kind of things that always like, I'm like, oh, because then I can, I can make it as big as small or yeah. red, orange, blue as I want it to be, right? So for me, <laughs> you got to like, read the Christmas episode book then. <laughs> <laughs> See, because it just, I just love innuendos because then I can, it makes it more of a fantasy that I'm a part of rather than me like just like they're just describing it to you yeah 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 I it's less of a transcript that way yeah so yeah no that that does it for me but more than anything I loved how it came full circle that a lot of the traumas that they were dealing with on a day-to-day basis they were finding almost a healing and I know that's a stretch but almost a healing within each other and you know touching butts they just love each other so much <laughs> no I can see that because like they kind of I mean I just man like this couple was like so great like we read a lot of dark romance where it's like <clears throat> so trauma filled that Girl. and Tavia are like oh my god the trauma bonding yeah. is really intense here but I can say like with this book it was like they genuinely just like could not stay away from each other and mm-hmm. just like that made the story so much better and their bond was just so strong. It was just like I love them as soulmates. No, for mind. real. Like, they're they're soulmates in my mind. So I'm like, I love them together. They they were so great together. I and love, I love that she never took off her necklace. Never. Yeah. Never. And that that was the other thing I loved because like again, in your windows when she when he was like, I love saying that on your neck. And there was no conversation after that bit. Say list, I got you, babe. Whatever you want. Okay. But that's what I'm saying. Like, just explaining that kind of relationship that you can have as a dominant sub. Because, like, I feel like some people have come to me and have a, the misconception that it's just something that you just turn on and off. But you really are capable of showing that kind of affection and integrating it into your day to day relationships. Like, you really can be that person with your partner, even if you're a switch. Like, you knowing your love language is also a way of acting it out whether you're being intimate or not and so I think this book for me made it feel really cool to see like how they integrated it on a day-to-day basis because even when she responded every time he made a direct command like mm-hmm. when they're just uh, outside ooh. And but I would have too because if, boy, girl. every time that man spoke, I was like, yes. especially the audio book because he was literally ooh. on my like on my knees. What do you need? What do you need? Whatever you need, you need to do. like I, quickly, <laughs> I, would, I will do it. I will I'll do be it, your I perfect promise. little slut because what do you mean? Because baby, yeah. if you call me darling or pet one more time, and ooh. like yeah, he darling, had some good like, pet names. He I, really, love oh. I love darling. I love calling is my her shit. darling like that. Because some of these books be having some really odd pet names that I'm like, Ugh, that oh, is yeah. so ill, gives me the ick. But like, Darling is just such a, just like a sweet, simple, that I'm like, you got me. That, yeah. That's all you got. Yeah, because what's the me. other, what does the other book say? What, uh, I think it's in the series also, Mon Petit Mon Tu, My yeah. Little Liar. Don't yeah. call me that yeah. outside. Don't you call me that outside. That's not nice. <laughs> I'm <laughs> not outside girl uh, we just finished no, reading I mean... we read the center and like her pet name was little demon and I was like ew like don't call... it That's... wasn't hitting for me that is not no, like that, do... that is not something I'm that... a demon that's like yeah. kind of spawn or <laughs> like, like spawn of satan or something yeah, yeah listen it's one darling... thing to be on demon time but you're just gonna call me a general demon yeah um, get away and... from I'm like, Darling was just so sweet and endearing. Like, it was mm-hmm. it was like an endearing pet name. Sure. Not it felt endearing when he was calling her a slut. So, um, I mean... <laughs> hey, listen, that's a fact. But she even said that. She was like, usually his insults would hurt, but now but it's... She was like, let me out. Like, she said, she out. said he, he said, I gotta pull that right here because this was one of my favorite quotes. She said, the insult... Uh, slices against my middle, but the way he says it makes me want to be his whore. Yeah, she said to be filthy and depraved just for him, only ever just for him, girl. Yes, I feel it. A pause, pause, a pause. <laughs> that that's it, a- baby. That's it. Slices oh, in my middle. See, but that's what I'm saying. Those innuendos, 
love that love that definitely this this book so um what would you guys rate this book as a newbie it's a good 8.5 for me okay Uh, out of five one one out of five oh shoot one out of five Uh, five stars (laughs) <laughs> one out of five stars um i would give it i would say i would give it a five stars there's nothing in this book that i would really change i think it was a good story and i, I was really like it too it was the readability was great it was a good smut i enjoyed it so yeah, I, would I, say yeah. it's I would got say a five, five for me yeah five, i think so too i think it was just so good and then it's just like it wasn't just, you know, we'd be reading some stuff that's just like porn, 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 which is fine. But mm-hmm. sometimes I need a little bit, a little bit more. Like, in this, I feel like this story gave that. And even before the smut scenes, like you just had so much other parts of the story going on that then when you got to the smut, you're like, oh, this is like just an extra treat in the book. Mm-hmm. But it's not like the whole book. And so I, I would definitely do a five. I mean, I, yeah. I I might have to give it a five. It's only one through five because it was one of those. So the other book that I'm listening to, I'm literally having to coach myself through it. I'm not going to lie to you. Which um, one is that? I forgot what it's called. The scar, but the scarred prince. What's his name? What What is it? Tristan. Oh, oh scarred with. It gets good. It really just hang on a little. It does. I'm, I'm into it. I'm into it. it I'm in there. But really I'm coaching, good. I'm coaching myself through it only because I don't love their interaction as much. But this one, I'll say, I'll give it a five because it was it was so effortless to get through. For one, I loved the connection and the nostalgia and how how on point they hit it. Because, like I said, I was. <laughs> I was a Neverland fan, okay? Um, So, like, being able to reference the Disney characters so closely to the characters in this book, so easy to read, seamless, seamless interactions. And like you said, once it got to the spicy scenes, it was basically like I was watching a really good movie and, like, I get to see their feelings being interacted. Beautiful. And imagery was on point. I could see him. I could see her. If I were to draw these people, like, this is what I feel about it. So I would definitely give it a five in that aspect. The only reason why I said anything lower than that is because I just, those, those words, it just makes me (laughs) cheeky. You, and you know how it's, pussy. I can't, I can't, I can't. can't. No, Um, I, I get that. But overall, it, it is a five. It especially like I said, for me being a newbie, it was it was a beautiful introduction, and it made me it made me want to look for the rest of the books for sure. It made me I was excited to get into the rest of the series. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm here glad for that you uh, came on and did an episode with us for it. Yes, babe. yeah, I appreciate the recommendations. Like this. I'm not I'm not just um a fan of the reading like I'm a fan of the podcast because I get like a uh, inside scoop on whether or not I want to dive into the book because you guys give just enough for me to be like I'm in let's read this right now let's go let's go let's do it so. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad I'm glad that we're helping people I know, see I'm if like, they I want to read the book that. So. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> Thank you for letting me come. Of yes. course. You see what I did there? Come. Um, do you guys have any thoughts or anything else you want to say on the podcast? I do want to say fuck me, but that's oh, it. Oh, in real life. Me, yeah. Myra, all of them. Kill them dead. For real. But other than that, <laughs> the book was just really good. So if anybody is a newbie and is looking for a, a like kind of a dark romance to get into, this would definitely be the one that I would recommend. Yeah, Absolutely. I recommend it. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yep. Okay. Well, it was um, nice having everyone. I'm so happy that you guys were all here today. We were able to get it done. 
You guys have a good night. You too. Make good choices. Bye.